بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good morning How is everyone? I hope all of you are doing fine at home and I hope you are going to enjoy today's lesson uh, this is uh, our our last lesson for um, with me okay and today I'm going to uh, teach you uh, some uh, important parts that will uh, make you better in your writing okay let's start tuition online Perlis Mengaji brought to you by Perlis State Government Education Department Jaib's Islamic Religious Affairs Department and Maib's Islamic Religious and Malay Customs Council. Today, you are going to learn what I call today's topic as be clear, be specific, you will shine. See? You are going to shine. Okay? What is this uh, be clear, be specific and you will shine? Okay. Whatever you are going to write, you have to be clear and use specific words. This means that only certain words should be used to show the exact meaning. Though most words have synonyms, you have to choose the most appropriate ones to enhance your writing. Okay? Alright. So, can you see the big pencils there? Alright. Okay, so, today I am going to uh, tell you, I am going to share with you, okay, uh, no preposition, negative adjectives, confusing verbs. Which one? Say it in another way and show, don't tell. There are six parts here, but all these six, six parts are interconnected. Okay, one to another, okay, all of them will help you to be specific okay so that you will be uh, writing your compositions or you will be uh, writing your answers in a very uh, correct way okay okay let's see what um, these uh, six things are going to do today okay let's go number one the cases of no preposition okay preposition there are certain cases where you do not use preposition okay Let's see the first one, case number one. After go, we usually use to plus place. For example, I'm going to the mall. We went to Korea last year. Exceptions. So here are the exceptions. The first one is home. And the second one is downtown. So do not use to with this. So you just say, I'm going home. I'm going home afterwards. We went downtown last night. So there is no preposition with home and downtown. Down. Okay? Case number two. We usually use on plus a day and in plus a month. So on is with day and in is with month. And you cannot interchange them. I have a meeting on Friday. Well, that's today. We will call you on 1st June. We hope that somebody is going to call us with good news. And the concert is in December. So day. And my uh, day is, you, you are going to use on. Concert in, in December, you use in with the month. Do not use in, do not use in or on with yesterday, tomorrow, this, last and next. I repeat, yesterday, tomorrow, this, last and next, you do not use in or on like the three examples I have given above. Okay? So you are going to say, I have a meeting tomorrow. We'll call you next Friday. The concert is this June. So, yesterday, tomorrow, this, last and next, do not use in or on. Okay. Case number three. We usually use into for movement from outside to inside. She came into my room. Let's go into the house. Okay, that is movement from outside to inside. The exception is for the word enter. She entered my room. Let's enter the house. Okay, so enter, you do not put preposition. Okay, that's number three. Now, number four. Okay, 
okay sorry uh, the further explanation on the word enter enter into is only used for starting agreements negotiations discussions and etc for example the two companies entered into a financial agreement Malaysia and Vietnam will enter into trade negotiations next month so you use enter to for starting agreements negotiations and discussions okay now that's case number four we do not use to after a 10 when it means to go or to be present nine students attended the lecture or number two i regularly attend sewing classes you could use go to instead of attend okay nine students went to the lecture the past tense of go i regularly go to sewing classes so that's where you put the to there Attend to means to pay attention to or handle something. Doctors attended to the people who were injured in the accident. We will attend to that problem later. Okay, so do not use to after attend when it means to go or to be present. Okay. Case number five. Do not use of. When lack like is used as a verb, the word lack like is sometimes a verb, sometimes a noun, depending on the, uh, the sentence. So uh, here, as a verb, we do not use of when lack like is used as a verb. So you say, I sometimes lack confidence. Well, sometimes, you know. Last night's dinner lack like salt. Hmm. All right. We use of when lack like is used as a noun. So when lack like is used as a noun, then we use of. I'm trying to overcome my lack of confidence. The lack of salt made the food tasteless. Of course, the lack of salt made the food tasteless. Okay? So, you use of when lack is a noun. But when lack is used as a verb, you do not use of. Okay? So, there are five cases of no preposition. Okay? I hope you can remember. There's uh, about uh, these uh, case, uh, cases of no prepositions. Okay? Let's go to the next part of our lesson today. Yes, the second one is negative adjectives to describe undesirable traits in people, things or situations. Remember, not everything is positive. Okay, People have positive and also negative uh, uh, behaviour. And this is also important when you want to uh, answer your literature question, negative characters. Okay, Characters with uh, negative traits. Okay, So, I am going to introduce to you uh, negative adjectives to describe undesirable traits in people, things or situations. The first one is the word hideous. The adjective hideous means extremely ugly, opposite of beautiful. It can also be used to describe things that are morally shocking or offensive. I like this apartment but those bright green curtains are hideous. So hideous here means extremely ugly. Hideous acts of torture were committed during the war. So here the word hideous means morally shocking or offensive. So the first word is hideous. Number two, revolting, repulsive, either one. Okay? Both of these adjectives describe something that is disgusting. It makes you feel sick and have almost a physical reaction of wanting to get away from the thing. The smell coming from the portable toilets was revolting. He was fired after he made a repulsive joke about his manager's private life. Okay, don't simply make jokes about other people's life, okay? Especially repulsive jokes. You end up in hot soup. Okay. Next. Number three, stingy. I think most of you know the word stingy. Stingy is the opposite of generous. Someone who is stingy doesn't like to spend or give money even in situations where they should. He is so stingy that he does not even buy birthday gifts for his own mother. So very stingy. Hmm? Okay, so don't be a stingy person. Next one is obnoxious. The word obnoxious means disagreeable in a way that disgusts other people. You can describe a thing, a person or someone's behaviour as obnoxious. Nobody wanted to talk to the obnoxious man. Well, if you're obnoxious, nobody wanted to talk to you and nobody would like to be your friend. Okay. Number five is the word dysfunctional. 
The adjective dysfunctional describes something that does not function properly. It is usually used for relationships or families that have unhealthy habits of interacting in ways that are not normal or positive. Sarah has a dysfunctional relationship with her father who never appreciates her sacrifices. So dysfunctional. Okay. The next one is the word spoiled. When used about food, the adjective spoiled means the food has gone bad. It is no longer suitable for eating. If you eat, you might get food poisoning. When used to describe a person, especially a child, it means the person usually gets everything they want and always expects this to happen. Ugh, my coffee tastes awful. I think the milk I put in it was spoiled. And now, let's go about the child. Timmy is a spoiled little boy who screams at his parents if they do not buy him candy. And usually when you talk about a child, uh, people usually use the word together with the word spoiled, you spoil bread. Okay? That's the word spoil. Number seven is the word slimy. The adjective slimy is used to describe something with an unpleasant, wet, slippery texture. Worms and snails are slimy. It can also be used to describe a person who is dishonest but tries to hide it and be likable. The river bank was covered with slimy mud. Okay, that is you're talking about mud. Okay. I don't like slimy salespeople who try to get you to buy things you do not really need. So when you come across these people pestering you to buy something, you can call them slimy. Okay? Number eight, Kaluis. A person who is callous doesn't appear to have feelings or care about emotions. How can you be so callous when people are suffering? Okay, so don't be a callous person. Okay. Now we go to number nine is the word petty. A person who is petty places great importance on small problems leading to conflict and bad feelings. My friend is rather petty. She gets mad at me if I don't return her text right away. Right? So, very petty. Putting great importance on small problems. Huh? Number 10 is the word dreary. The adjective dreary means something is boring, dark and depressing. It is often used to talk about the weather but can also be used to describe places, tasks and events. It wasn't the best weekend for camping. The weather was dreary. We didn't see the sun for three days. What kind of camping is that? It's going to be very, very boring, right? Okay, Jim grew up in a dreary, run-down neighborhood that he couldn't wait to leave. Here, the word run-down means not well-maintained. So, dreary, okay, you can refer to the weather. Uh, you can also uh, describe places, tasks, and events. So, to put them together, so don't be a hideous, revolting, repulsive, stingy, obnoxious, dysfunctional, sports, slimy, callous, petty person living in a dreary place. All of them together there. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, let's go to the next one. Confusing verbs. Verbs, sometimes they are confusing. Very confusing sometimes. Okay? Okay, so what are the confusing verbs? Okay. Ha. The first one is close and shut. You can use both close and shut with doors and windows. Please close the door. I think your teacher uh, uh, sometimes says this, right? Please shut the door. So, I shut the window because the bugs were getting in. I closed the window because the bugs were getting in. So, close and shut, you can use both with doors and windows. With eyes and mouths, Close is probably a little more common than shut, especially with mouth. She closed her eyes and tried to fall asleep. The dentist asked me to close my mouth. Okay, shut your mouth is a very rude way to tell somebody to stop talking. If you say somebody closed his or her eyes to something, it means they ignored something wrong or bad and pretended they were not aware of it. Okay. The manager closed his eyes to the problems in the company and that caused some good employees to leave. Alright? Close his eyes to the problems. Okay? Okay. When talking about a store, 
a bank, post office, etc., stopping its operations for the day, or a road that is blocked because of construction or damage or MCO, we use only close, not shut. Okay? The bank closes at 5 p.m. What time does the post office close? The road is closed because of MCO. Okay? So store, bank, post office, and road, okay, you use only close. Okay. Start and begin. All right. You can use both start and begin for an activity. I started playing the violin when I was 8 years old. What time does the meeting start? Soon. He is beginning to read more advanced books in English. We left the park when it began to rain. So that is start and begin. When you turn on a car or vehicle, use start. I had to call a mechanic because my car wouldn't start. In general, begin is used for more formal and more abstract ideas. Scientists are studying how life on Earth began. Or World War II began in 1939. So begin is for more formal and more abstract ideas. Okay? And and finish. Okay. You might think they are the same. They are the same, but they are not really the same. When something ends, it means it stops. My English class ends at 7.30 p.m. She ended her last relationship because she felt she had been betrayed. When something finishes, it means it is completed. She finished the test and gave it to the teacher. We must finish the homework this Friday. That's today, people. You better finish your homework given by your teacher. Okay? And unfinish. Okay? Hear and listen. Hear is often used for the action that you do accidentally. Did you hear that? It sounded like a gunshot. Listen is often used for the action that you do intentionally. I listened to the new song while driving home. Okay? So listen often for the action that you do intentionally. Hear accidentally. All right. Okay. The word hear can also refer to communication when you learn something because somebody told you. I heard, meaning that somebody told me, I heard your daughter got into a car accident. Is she alright? Have you heard about the new Batman movie coming out soon? Okay, so the word hear also to refer to communication. Alright? Okay. Finally, the expression hear from a person or company means to receive any type of communication from them. Could be a phone call, an email or a letter. I sent my application for the job but I haven't heard from the company yet. It means that they haven't contacted me yet. Okay, I haven't heard from. I was thrilled to get your email. It was so nice to hear from you after all these years. Ah, this is to receive uh, any type of communication. Okay? It's nice to hear from you, especially someone uh, who has not been uh, calling you for many, many uh, years. Okay? All right. Now we go to which one? Hmm. Which one? It means that there is only one which is correct. They might look the same, they might sound the same, but only one is suitable in a certain kind of situation. All right. Which one? <clears throat> okay, the first set is whether W H T H E R and whether W E A T H E R. Both sounds the same. Okay, spelling a little bit different. Okay, and here uh, in every set, I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you some tips on how to remember the spelling. All right, W H T H E R whether is used to express choices or possibilities. I don't know whether I want to drink coffee or tea. Okay, there are choices there. So, whether you do not know which one to choose. W-E-A-T-H-E-R, the weather, is the condition of the atmosphere at a particular place and time. The reporter said the weather will be sunny today. Okay, but it's uh, a little bit cloudy in Perlis today. And weather can also be used as an adjective as in weather report or all weather chairs. Alright, um, credit goes to AmericanEnglish.state.gov. Uh, right, okay. That is weather. Okay, so, 
how to remember W H T H E R and W E A T H E R easily. The weather, okay, the one that you have the, the possibility, the choices, okay, you remember where W H E R E, the W H group. Remember where, when, what, why. So weather is there in that group. So you remember where to go, whether to go to uh, London. Whether to go to Tokyo when uh, MCO uh, is, has, has been lifted, right? So whether you remember where the weather W E A T H E R you remember where, okay? Wear cotton shirt when the weather is sunny. Okay, so if you suddenly get confused in the exam, which one uh, to to use, which is the right spelling, you remember the weather when you want to talk about the weather that is what you wear. Okay, so uh, the first one is you remember where the uh, the group of the WH group and the weather uh, the situation uh, you use remember the where W E A even the spelling there starts with W E A. Okay, all right, done with the weather. Quiet and quiet. All right, Q U I E T quiet, making very little noise, not talking. Keep quiet. Your teacher always says that. I always say that. Please be quiet while the baby is sleeping. Quiet, Q-U-I-T-E, means very or completely. This exam is quite challenging. Alright, so. The easiest way, sorry. The easiest way to remember quiet and quiet is by focusing on the pronunciation. Q-U-I-E-T, quiet, the yet sound at the back there. Q U I T E quiet. It is the quit with the E. Alright? So you want to say it's quite mm, horrible. You remember the word quit, put the E there. Quiet is how you spell and how you pronounce. Then you will not get them mixed up, which is which. I hope you're going to remember this. Quiet and quiet. Compliment, C O M P L E M E N T, and the other compliment is C O M P L I M E N T. They sound the same, they are both noun. Okay? Compliments, the P L E M E N T, is the something that makes anything, another thing better or more complete. For me, cookies are the perfect complement to a cup of coffee. The compliment, the P L I M E N T, praise or admiration of somebody or something. Love it, cute car. I like your car. I received several compliments on my new car. It is the case of the E and the I doing their job here. Okay. Okay. So, compliment. Okay. Remember complete. C O M P L E T E complete so you get compliment compliment C O M P L I E M T you focus on the I I am proud of your success okay uh, I am proud of your success so you want to compliment somebody okay you want to tell how happy you are that they have won a, 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 in a competition so compliment is focusing on the I Compliment, C O M P L E M N T. Remember, complete. Complete, compliment. Okay? All right. Okay, that's the compliment. Again, the E and the I. Ha, huh. this one. T H R O U G H, the pronunciation is through. Okay? Another one is T H O R O U G H, the pronunciation it is pronounced as Tara. Through is from one end of something to the other. Past a barrier or test. I have to make true exams. Okay, we all have to. He slept through the movie. Okay. Tara, including every possible part or detail. All employees have a thorough understanding of the company rules. Thorough understanding meaning that every possible part or detail has been explained to them. Okay? Has been explained to them. Alright, so how do you remember? To remember through, think of through, past tense of through. He threw the ball through the window. Ha, that's the through. T-H-R-O-U-G-H means 
uh, from one side to the other. Okay. And then to remember the spelling of Tara, put O before and after R. Uh, in true, the O is only after the R. But in Tara, okay, the O is before and after the R. So that would be Tara. So don't get them mistaken. Don't get mixed up again. Okay. All right. Now. Accept. A C C E P T E X C E P T. Accept is to receive, to take, or agree to. He accepted the company's offer. E X C E P T. The accept means not including someone or something. Can you see that? There's a giraffe, a hippo, a tiger, a monkey, and a snake. All have green ticks except for the snake have a red uh, across there. I like all of those except. The snake. So, accept is excluding. Okay? Alright. So, how do you remember them? A, C, C, E, P, T. Something you agree, you get. Remember the A. The first letter. Okay? Something you get, something you agree. The A. The first letter. Accept. E, X, C, E, P, T. Something excluded. Not there. You do not want it. You don't like it. So, you put the E. You remember the E there. You remember the E. Accept start with A. The first letter. And Except E X E P T, the one which excluded. Okay, you re, you focus on the E. Okay, all right. So you accept something. Uh, you uh, something is excluded. That is accept. Sounds the same, but they are being spelled uh, differently. Effect and effect. This is a real problem with many students. Okay. A fact, A F F E C T is a verb. All right, E F F E C T effect is a noun. A fact means to influence, to produce a change in someone or something. So you see, pollution negatively affects the environment. A verb where you can put R uh, S, where you can put past tense with E D, you can put R N G yourself. A fact affected, affecting. All right, effect is a noun. Okay, and impact, change or result. Okay, exercise and healthy eating have positive effects, of course. Health, exercise and healthy eating have positive effects. Okay. Now, how do you remember which one is effect, which one is effect to use in your writing? Effect starts with A to change. Effect, A, F, F, E, C, T, this is to change there. It's a verb. So, you put tenses there. Okay? Effect, affected, affecting. Effect starts with E. The result. Okay? It's a noun. So, when it's noun, you can have singular and plural. One effect, many effects. Okay? So, effect, change. The E there. Effect, result. The E there. Okay? There are, that would be singular, singular and plural. And the effect have tenses. Right? So, effect and effect. Don't get them wrong anymore. Okay. Ha. Huh. This one is uh, on special request for my students. Okay. Uh, one of my students uh, requested uh, me to, to uh, introduce this, uh, to talk about this. This is the problem of who and whom. Who is a subject pronoun like I, he, she and we. A subject pronoun used to ask which person does an action or which person is a certain way. Who are you? Well, so you have not seen this person for many years, so you ask, who are you? Okay, who is going? The lady who is wearing a blue dress is my daughter. So, who is a subject pronoun? Whom? Whom is an object pronoun like him, her and us? Okay, used to ask which person receives an action. Whom did you choose as our team leader? Okay, she is the woman whom I met in London. Whom did he marry? Huh, that must be some interesting news. Okay, alright, so who is a subject pronoun? Whom is an object pronoun? Okay, alright. Now we come to the section where I call it say it in another way. Say it in another way. The first one is cry. 
is a verb. You can use whip with mean shed tears. You can say sob, cry noisily, making loud convulsive gaps. You say blubber, cry noisily and uncontrollably. You can also say howl, a loud cry of pain, fear or amusement. You can also say wail, a prolonged high pitch cry of pain, grief or anger. And you can also say whimper, make a series of low feeble sounds expressive of fear, pain or unhappiness. So for cry, you have whip, sup, blubber, howl, wail and whimper. But they are a little bit different when you want to use in a certain situation. And cry is a verb where you can put cry, cried, crying. Alright, so for the next uh, uh, words, it is your duty to find out the specific meaning like I, the one that I've done here. Because I think uh, learning is not only spoon feeding, but it's also that you have to work it out. You have to sweat it out. Nothing comes free, you know. Okay? Alright. Okay. So, you are going to find out the meaning of all the other uh, set of words. Okay? Now, this one is the word tired. It is adjective. Tired is an adjective. You have exhausted, shattered, drowsy, drained, fatigued, sleepy, burnt out. Okay? Find out the meaning of each of these uh, words. Uh, which means uh, tired, but a little bit different, you are going to use them in very specific situation. Remember, today's lesson is be specific, okay? Next one is the word sad. This is an adjective, okay? You have unhappy, troubled, melancholy, somber, despairing, glum, down in the dumps. Everything, all of this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, all means sad. But they are a little bit different. So find out the meaning. Okay. Next one. Hate is a verb. So you have hate, hated, hating. Yeah? Hate. You can use detest, abhor, loathe, despise, can't stand, be repelled by, and have an aversion to hate. Right. Next one. Horrible. Also an adjective. Hideous, grotesque. Unsightly, horrid, revolting, grisly. All right. Another one, beastly, all horrible. Next one is the word walk. Is a verb. Straw, hike, saunter, tiptoe, step, roam, march. All mean walking. Okay. Uh, they are all uh, related to the word walk, but uh, each word is a little bit different uh, in, in a certain situation. Tiptoe, uh, look at the pink colour there, remember pink panther. Hmm? Okay. The next one is the word look. Glance, peer, stare, view, gaze, watch. And pick. Hmm. Okay. These are, uh, say it in another way for the word look. It has a verb. It, the past tense is it. The perfect tense is eaten. The continuous tense is eating. All right. So you have chew, devour, feed, ingest, swallow, nibble, and munch. Okay. It. Terrible is an adjective. So you have hideous, appalling, frightful, horrendous, atrocious, ghastly, dreadful. Right is a verb. Right, wrote, written, writing. Okay. So you have scribble, note, scrawl, ink, draft, type, draw up. Ah, find out the meaning each uh, meaning each word has a very specific meaning and when to use. This is the word amazing. It is an adjective. So marvelous, okay, spectacular, incredible, unbelievable, 
extraordinary, astounding, wonderful. That's amazing. Alright? Okay. I like this picture. Disgusting. It is also an adjective. So you have gruesome, horrific, nasty, vile, abominable, loathsome, repugnant. Okay? Disgusting. Laugh is a verb. Giggle, chuckle, cackle, chortle, crack up, split one's sides. Laugh. And number six. Show, don't tell, paint a big beautiful picture of different hues with your words. I'm going to show you something. See? Ha, ah, that's a beautiful picture of different hues. Okay, this is what you're going to do in your writing. <coughs> the difference between show and tell is that show invokes on the reader a mental image of the scene or emotion, while tell is a statement of an action or emotion. So, let's see. Tell, I was happy. Tell, just very simple. I was happy. But you show, how do you show? You say, I skip all the way home humming cheerful songs as if my heart would burst <coughs> with joy. That is, show. You tell the classroom was a mess, but you show by saying that books, papers, and tools were strewn everywhere across the classroom, making the place look like a lazy teenager's bedroom. You show. You tell, we lost the game. I was terribly upset. But you show in your writing by saying, after the game, I walk slowly alone, head down, hands in my pocket, and drag my feet along the pavement. Nobody likes losing. You see? You can picture it in your mind. Tell, I was sad. Hmm, yes, I was sad. But how sad are you? My heart felt heavy. There was a lump in my throat, and I tried really hard not to let the tears fall on my cheeks. It was not easy. You see? All right. Tell the dog, look at me. Hmm. How are you going to show? The brown, fluffy dog gazed at me with his big black eyes. He yelped and spun around in a circle as if trying to tell me something. See? Brown, fluffy dog, big black eyes. Yelp and spun around. Okay, you see, you show. Here comes another one. I was really excited and nervous. Butterflies, huh? All right, okay. You show, you see, I kept going to the window every five seconds to check and see if my mom was home yet. I thought every little sound in the hallway might be her. I kept shuffling and tapping my feet. Sweat glistened on my forehead. Oh, very nervous, huh? Okay. Tell, the girl cried bitterly. Poor girl. Show. Tears rolled down her smooth cheeks to the corner of her lips. She wiped them with the back of her hand. What about the tears in her heart? Would she be able to dry them? Hmm, alright? Okay. Tell. Nurul was anxious. She wanted to win so badly. So, you show. Her large brown eyes were fixed on the master of ceremony. She felt she could not breathe. Nurul bit her lower lip, and an incurable habit that sometimes gave her blisters. Oh God, please let me win. Please make her announce my name. Okay? Alright. Put in the uppercase there, uh, the word my there. Uppercase is there so to show that you are putting, uh, putting uh, an emphasis on it. So you show. Okay. Tell. He knew he had hurt his mother. Simple. But when you show, you are going to say... The moment he uttered those hurtful words, he regretted them immediately. Alas, it was too late. He stared apologetically at the beautiful, strong lady who went through countless hardships to give him the life he knew. There was a deafening silence in the room. His mother said nothing. Nothing. Hurt was written all over her face. Tell, we were overjoyed. <laughs> we were overjoyed, okay? Show. 
we thump our fist. We were laughing and crying at the same time. I do not remember who was hugging me and repeatedly saying, we did it. To win the debate as an underdog, to topple the three times national champion was, nothing, was something beyond our dreams. So you show, you uh, explain, you, you draw a picture with thousand words. Okay? You draw a wonderful picture with your words. No need to draw a real picture, you know? All right? Okay? Now. Okay. All right. Uh, before I end uh, today's lesson, this is something I would like to share with you. I love this very much. Okay? Definitions of a few important jobs. A few. Special definitions. Doctor. A person licensed to practice medicine as a physician, surgeon, dentist, or veterinarian. Veterinarian, sorry. Okay, I have many ex students who are now uh, who are now uh, working as a, a doctor, uh, working as doctors, uh, veterinarian even. All right. Okay. Lawyer, a person whose profession is to represent clients in a court of law or to advise or act for clients in other legal matters. That's a lawyer. Mm, some of my ex students are also lawyers. All right. Three, executive, a person having administrative or supervisory authority in an organization. That is an executive. Okay. Number four, firefighter, a person who fights destructive fires. Okay. They are very brave. I must say that they are very brave. Number five, a pilot, a person qualified to operate an airplane balloon or other aircraft okay now we come to number six <clears throat> teacher a person who teaches all of the above to write to read write spell listen think debate solve problems add subtract multiple divide perform experiments analyze history know right from wrong wash their hands get along with others construct could create, conjugate, and dream about one day having an important job. That's a teacher, and that's me. Credit goes to Facebook. You can't scare me, I'm a teacher. Yeah, you can't scare me, I'm a teacher. All right? So, a doctor, a lawyer, executive, firefighter, pilot, all being taught by a teacher. <coughs> Thank you, frontliners. Conditional movement, control order, CMCO, pray and stay at home. Okay? Thank you. Fasilah Dahman. Assalamualaikum. Hope you have a good day. And pray that this MCO will be lifted uh, very soon that all of us can go back to school. That's all for today. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>